having me. Um, I wanted to start today off by showing you a building and then asking you what your first thoughts are when you see this building. And it's not a trick question, but what comes to mind? Horrible? Horrible. Portable? Portable. A little bit older, right? Is it good architecture? It's small. Is it, would you consider it good design? No, a trailer. So you were on par with the fact that, sure enough, it is a classroom. So this is where two million students in the state of California go and spend their days, the majority of their days. Every day, this is where they're learning. So when we think about that, and we think about the students, K through 12, that go here every day, and we ask them, or we tell them, um, where do you see yourselves, or what do you think your future is going to look like, and we tell them they can be anything and do anything. But the best that we can do for them is provide them with a portable, temporary, dilapidated trailer. What sort of inspiration does that ask of them and of themselves? So surely, there has to be something better. As it turns out, modular construction is one of the you know, understandable uh, reasonings behind education and classrooms. When you think of portable construction, you think of two things right away, something that's fast and something that's affordable. And when it comes to education, those are you know, two requirements. But populations change, demographics change, communities grow, and the schools around them need to respond quickly. And then at the same time, budgets are continuously cut from programs, let alone the infrastructure. So in some ways, it makes sense that this is you know, the solution. But at the same time, modular construction is a $2 billion industry. So it is ripe for innovation and ripe to challenge. When you think of traditional construction, you think of you know, better design, something that takes a little bit longer, um, but there's more innovation around it. And so with those concepts of trying to find something that's equally quality, you know, something that's sustainable, that has a little bit of flexibility, modular construction is that square box, you also want something that's built better. And so what, what does that look like when it comes to a classroom? Well, for starters, let's look at the ceiling. And definitely you're looking at a front row student here. Like, raise, I would raise my hand all the time. I would engage. I would ask questions. I was full-blown teacher's pet. So I was a front row student. And the fact is, is that there's a difference. There is such a thing as somebody that's a front row student and a back row student. And you know the difference in the environment and the difference in the education that somebody that sits in the back row from the front row, that's something that we should question. You know, the environment should be the exact same for every student. And a lot of that has to do with when you're sitting in the back row, there's poor acoustics. A student can't hear as well. And as a result, they're not asking questions or they're afraid to ask questions because they're afraid that maybe they just didn't understand or didn't hear correctly. And so instead of those typical acoustical ceiling tiles that you see everywhere, they're pretty cheap but they're not just cutting it. We need to find a, a, a ceiling system that is acoustically sound so that it levels the playing field for every student. So it's not a front row student or a back row student. Everybody's getting the same experience. And then the second thing I wanted to point out in a better design is the walls. You can see that this side is a little bit higher. The, sp the interior space seems pretty big. It's voluminous. And if you remember back at that second slide of the interior classroom, it was short ceilings. Well, a lot of that is driven by the fact that modular construction is designed around the dimensions of a flatbed truck. Because when you ship modular, you sh you're shipping in 3D. And that generally means that the ceiling's 10 feet tall and 40 feet long of a classroom space. And that has an impact on the air circulation. So what you breathe in those classrooms is not filtered and it's not moving up in the space around. A higher classroom space creates a little bit of um, efficiency when it comes to the air that you breathe. And as it turns out, the number one reasons why students miss class every year is because of asthma. 
So literally the buildings that they're sitting in are toxic and make them sick. Another great thing about this taller building is the fact that you can employ a clear story window. So you have windows on both sides and there's that operable window also to help out with that fresh air circulation. But the clear stories are something that uh, I think are a little bit fascinating. The fact that you can see, a student can see on all four sides and out of the, out of the front and out the back. And as it turns out, daylighting is a pretty important contributor to paying attention and productivity. So I am from, coming from San Francisco, but I'm a student, a graduate of the University of Oklahoma. And he doesn't realize that I'm going to share a story about him um, here in a minute. But I was an undergrad dueling majors with architecture and construction science. And my second year in architecture studio, I had the opportunity to have um, one of my projects critiqued by Hans Butzer. And he'll be speaking later this afternoon. And I'm not, I'm putting him on the spot. He doesn't know that I'm going to tell him this, but I, this is not a platform to retaliate and spread <laughs> ill will towards him. It's to share with you a lesson that he taught me. So here I am, and I'm, you know, in that fragile ego state of a second year architecture student receiving some actually, pro you know, pretty positive feedback, which rumor had it was, was rare. And, um, and I thought I was doing so great. Part of the program of that particular assignment was to have office spaces. And like any architecture student, it, I didn't really know what I was doing at the time, and I at the 11th hour place, these two offices in the back of the room, or in back of the design that I had thought of, and you know, didn't think anything of it, just checked off the requirements of the assignment. And during that critique, Hans asked me, have you ever been in an office where there's no da natural daylight? And barely being 20 years old, having little professional experience, I probably sheepish, sheepishly replied, no. And he said to me, well, you should try it sometime. So as fate would have it, my first year out of school, I you know, was bright-eyed, pretty green behind the ears, and I went to go work for um, a great company down in Texas, and sure enough, every day I showed up to a basement, and that's where I worked day in and day out. And I would come out you know, at 5.30 realizing it had rained, it was super, super hot, and I had no idea the temperature change, and the season has changed. So I learned in my own way this valuable lesson. A teacher could never have planned a better lesson plan to resonate the importance of natural daylight. And it would, you know, that was for me in a professional experience. In a classroom experience, uh, natural daylight actually contributes up to 20% in higher test scores. That's the difference between a C grade and an A grade. So I've talked a little bit about better air quality, better daylighting, and then acoustical, um, an acoustical requirement to help out our students. So if we can do that in a traditional construction, how can we do that in a more modular setting and get them quicker and a little bit more affordable? Well, maybe it's not looking at construction at all. Maybe it's at looking at a different industry. Boeing has about 370,000 parts that go into a 747. Yet, it takes them approximately 11 days from the start of that plane to go through their assembly line. So if it takes Boeing you know, a little over a week to put together the safest mode of transportation, why is it taking us so long to build a classroom? Well, they have a thousand, you know, thousands of parts that, you know, it, like, they're not standing there one by one putting it together. They're componentizing it. They're thinking of a better way to more efficiently assemble. And then they're, rep they're repeating the process. So can we do that in construction? And the exciting thing is, we can. So instead of thinking of a building as the studs and the nails and the ins insulation and the individual parts and pieces, let's componentize it. Let's take it to a facility where it's in a controlled environment. Let's repeat the process so that you can ship fl um, flat pack ship, which is different than modular. You're shipping more efficiently. In modular, you're shipping mainly just that box that's full of air. So if you flat pack it, and then if it arrives on site, you can easily erect and install in a matter of 11 days. This building right here was put, was put up just over 11 days. So we're not as good as Boeing, but you know we're getting there. 
and the result are bright classrooms, inspiring places, technologically um, like advanced learning environments. They're permanent structures, unlike temporary construction and unlike the temporary portables. And then they can handle sort of all sorts of wind loads. And because they're flat packed, they can be shipped across the country in an efficient ma manner. And then we're also testing the boundaries going vertical. And this is the result of the interior of that space. Here's an art studio classroom. And then this is one of our elementary classrooms. It looks like a fun place to learn. It's much more colorful and it's much more brighter. And so the thing of it is, is we still have a lot to learn and we still have a lot of ways that we can be better and build better and that's the challenge that we're rising. But when you ask a student to think outside the box, to dream that they can become whatever they want to do, this is the kind of place of where it starts and where it begins. And this is what we think our answer is. And so that's how, what I wanted to share with you all. Thank you so much for listening.